What's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's no name and the draft is finally over. My god did ESPN really drag out the draft this year. Uh, listen, day three was seven and a half hours long guys. Usually day three is about like four to five hours. After they heard that, uh, you know, day one and day two were the most watched NFL drafts and you know or NFL football programs or something like that in the history of it being on air ESPN already knew that they got to squeeze in some more ads to get that money guys. No joke God did they miss that mr. Relevant 255 pick they stretched that out But speaking of mr. Relevant and the picks um as you notice I did not make a video for any of the seventh round guys I'm kind of you know pairing them all together right here in one video because not about to make four separate vids for guys, four separate guys in the seventh rounds that might not even see the field, which is uh, something I'm going to touch on, on the, in this video. And also, whenever I do my full draft recap video, maybe sometime tomorrow or Monday. But uh, thank you guys for those of you that, uh, over the course of the three days, whether it was tuning into the live stream with me and Kid Blue, or you know, tuning into my vids that I put out, you know, liking, commenting, all that. Thank you for your support. And uh, thank you for uh, making the three days a bit more bearable because like I said ESPN I never want to see them hold you know basically be the host channel for the draft again it was it was a not a pleasant experience I'd rather uh, I'd rather go back uh, whenever quarantine is over hopefully next year we go back to a regular draft and it's not as dragged out and boring as it was this year but let's talk about the Giants final four picks um you know they they basically said, you guys wanted linebackers or you think we're ignoring linebackers. We're going to go all defense with the final four. Uh, first, they went with Carter Coughlin out of Minnesota, outside linebacker slash, slash edge. Then they went TJ Brunson out of South Carolina, inside linebacker. Then they went Chris Williamson, another cornerback, also out of Minnesota. And finally, the Mr. Irrelevant pick. Number 255, they went take Crowder, inside linebacker, slash running back out, actually, out of Georgia. And so now, he hasn't played running back since 2015, his uh, rookie season. So I definitely think the Giants took him for his linebacker skills. But hey, maybe they see him as a potential backup to Saquon. Uh, not exactly out of the question. But I will say this real quick. Um, I'm excited to see... <laughs> Fisk Vegas' reaction to the Giants draft. Uh, I love Fisk Vegas' channel, man. He's a great content creator. Uh, definitely has a different philosophy of how to build a team, though. And if you guys watch his channel, you know that he really, really wanted a wide receiver in day three. In fact, he wanted a wide receiver since day one. But he was he was begging for the Giants to take one, and they completely just ignored the position. Now, I thought, I did think that the Giants were going to take a wide receiver. I thought it was going to be around five or six. I, I, I've been on record saying that it is a need, but it's not exactly like their biggest need, so I won't be mad if they ignore it, but I did not expect them to just outright completely leave it as is. I definitely thought that we needed one more body in the receiving room, somebody reliable. Um, I definitely thought we were going to take somebody in the fifth or sixth round. I was looking at Donovan Peoples-Jones dropping for the longest while and thought we were going to take him. I looked at Antonio Gandy Golden go to the Redskins and my heart broke a little. I looked at... um. Colin Johnson get picked up before a couple of our picks even though he was also somebody else I was dropping and I was just like ah man the Giants really just don't value wide receiver this year and I'm fine with that because and I said this in my last vid two things you got to consider here man this is the seventh round so no matter who you pick here there's like a 99% chance that these guys don't even see the field like if can you name me one seventh round pick in the past couple of years that actually made it onto the field and made an impact on their team because I can't think of one immediately. And of course, it's it's the real world we're talking about here. There's always going to be outliers. But um, the probability of that happening isn't great. So even if they took a wide receiver, somebody that, you know, I thought or maybe even a consensus thought that they were more worthy than a seventh round pick, there's definitely a reason they dropped there. You know, you got to take that into consideration. But I am disappointed we just didn't even... Just because of the fact that you're taking flyers at this point in the seventh round and we had four picks... In the seventh round, I am disappointed we didn't just throw one out there for a wide receiver. I, I kind of expect them to uh, go and maybe bring up some undrafted free agents or maybe some current NFL agents that we don't know about. Because, uh, you know, we got Cody Latimer, who was not re-signed. He went to the Redskins. 
I think we also lost Russell, Russell Shepard. So it's not exactly like our wide receiving core in terms of quantity is what it was when we ended the season. So whether it's for a backup or for somebody to be a potential breakout, we need more bodies in there. It's just a fact. Uh, so I expect them to do something with the remaining time in the offseason. But uh, I am going to be excited to see how Fisk uh, reacts to this. He always has an entertaining video. As for my thoughts on the players that we took, I mean, like I said, these are really just flyers. I don't expect any of these guys to really see the field. Um, and right now, the linebacking room along with the secondary is completely packed with a bunch of bodies. I expect the starting slot corner to be either Julian Love or... Um, Holmes Darby Holmes or Darney Holmes I gotta check his name again that we got in the fourth round heard a lot of good thing about Holmes I'm gonna have to look at him more but I think the slot corner role is gonna go to one of those two and in terms of outside linebacker inside linebacker I fully expect of course one of the inside linebackers to be Blake Martinez and I think they brought in guys like Brunson and Tate Crowder more so for special teams but I wouldn't be you know it's not out of the realm of possibility that one of them maybe challenges Connolly and Mayer for that second starting role Outside linebackers where it's more interesting, where we took um, Cam Brown in the sixth and then we took Carter Coughlin here. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering, I think Fackrell might start. Uh, you know, it's I honestly think the Giants are going to have faith in Carter and Zimenez to take a step forward and for them to be the edge rushers for this year at least. I mean, when you think about the, the way they're going, at least the path that they let out in front of us, is that they have a really good foundation. I'm gonna say it right now, when I do my recap tomorrow, I'm giving the Giants an overall grade of a B. This was a good draft. It wasn't a flashy one, but it needed to happen. Our offensive line is, is damn near fixed. And that's something we weren't able to say for the past decade. And with that offensive line fixed, I'm guaranteeing you right now, barring injury or something terrible happening, Saquon is getting at least 1,500 rushing yards and Daniel Jones is gonna be sitting back in the pocket, slicing, dicing, dissecting defenses all year long our offense is going to be good and next year is the draft where you can take your flashy you know big name wide receiver maybe in the first round even and a, a edge rusher if you don't take somebody in free agency so i loved the way this draft played out even though i was disappointed while well, you know with some missed chances what i viewed as, as missed opportunities but i mean these last four guys like i said extra bodies extra bodies in the room the secondary and like i mentioned in the uh Holmes video they're definitely building a Patriots type defense where it's built back to front where the strength of it is in the secondary and having a great you know a great pass defense that allows and with the supporting cast of a, of a good pass rush most defenses are built the other way a great pass rush with a supporting cast being the pass defense but not the Patriots one and this is very similar to how the Patriots built their defense not exactly a surprise considering Joe Judge our head coach is from the Patriots but let me know what you guys think. Like I said, my full recap will be out either tomorrow or Monday. I'm taking a break. What did you guys think of the draft? I know there's gonna be, it's gonna be split. It's just gonna be split. There's people that wanted um, a bit more, uh, other offensive needs to be addressed, you know, other picks. Definitely people out there that wanted wide receivers that are gonna be unhappy. But I think this was a necessary draft. I'm out. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer!